Hi guys, Sean here. I'm here to give you five tips on how to improve your footage with the Waterwolf camera. Welcome guys to another tutorial. I hope you're all doing well. Today we will be covering five essential tips for the Waterwolf underwater camera. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss any of our future projects. The Waterwolf camera has been a great addition to our camera arsenal over the past few years. Now, it's far from perfect. One of the things we don't like about it is the fact that it only does 720p. The other thing we don't like about it is the fact that it has a small sensor, so it's really hard to use in low light conditions. But it has great battery life, and it hardly has any resistance in the water, making it perfect for trolling and deadbait fishing. I wouldn't recommend using the Waterwolf camera for casting with lures. Having two weights on your line while casting with a lure will make it highly likely that you will tangle up. What can you expect when you buy a new Waterwolf camera? In the box you will find a camera and some attributes. One is this uh, pin where you attach the camera on and obviously you will find some manuals. Now in these modern days hardly any of us read the manual so let's put those away. We got some essential stuff, some weights, a cap and a piece of foam which you can use uh, to make the camera float. We got the cap which we need to make the camera waterproof. We got three different weights and a pin which we can put on the lens protection cap. This lens protection cap has two functions. The pin makes it easy to remove the cap on the back and the cap itself protects the lens from any scratches when you... The Woodwolf also comes with three different weights. A heavy one, a medium one and a light one. And this determines the angle in which the camera faces down. You can also use the lens cap with the pin to remove these weights easily. One of the things we do is we attach a snap onto the metal pin that's into the Woodwolf connector, which makes it easy to attach a leader to it or a bait. Attaching your leader like this gives you the ability to switch lures easily. And also it creates extra distance between the camera and the lure. And so it gives you a better perspective on the water and higher quality videos. What I also try to do is bring a battery pack on the boat so I can charge up to two cameras. Battery life of the camera is up to four hours, but the fishing day is usually longer than those four hours. Charging of the camera usually takes about one and a half to two hours and then you're fully charged again. I also bring extra SD cards on the boat. The Waterwolf uses micro SD cards and has a maximum capacity of 32 gigabytes, so a 46 gigabyte card won't work. I use the 32s which can record up to eight hours in total. So a 16 gigabyte card can record up to four hours in total. What I like to do is when I catch a big fish, I just replace the SD card so I can keep my footage safe. Also, it's good to know that the LED light on the back of the camera gives a warning indication when the SD card isn't properly formatted or if it's damaged in whatever way. The LED light will blink rapidly. Once the SD card is properly inserted and working correctly, the LED light will be turned on constantly for a few seconds and after that, the LED light will blink at a rate of once every one or two seconds, showing you that the SD card is running properly, showing, that you, showing you that the camera is running properly and the SD card is working. Also, when you turn off the camera, make sure you wait a couple of seconds until the LED light has turned off. If you remove the SD card too soon, you will corrupt the files and possibly damage the SD card. Also, you want to try and use the camera in water that is as clear as possible. In this particular case, the Xander is really looking into the camera, which happens quite often. But when you have clear water, then you can actually see the bait. See more fish following the bait and approaching it from a greater distance, like this fish just hitting it straight from underneath. Also on this footage you notice that we put an extra leader in front of the line through trout. Coming back on tip number one, creating distance between the camera and the bait. As tip number four, what you want to try and do is run the camera as high as possible towards the surface. The deeper you go, the less light you will get and the less clear the image will be that you will get out of the camera. As our fifth and final tip, Franz will explain how he uses the Waterwolf camera when dead bait fishing. Um, I have a pretty simple rig uh, to fish with dead baits. 
everyone knows these bicycle lights. You can buy them everywhere and there's a little standard to rig it with your bike. You can uh, put it over one of the, the steel tubes of your bike and then uh, you've got something like this to put it in. Well, those things come in extremely handy for dead bait fishing because you can put it over your camera like this. There's these uh, rubber strips that come with the light and the kit. You just put them in. The more of these rubber strips you put in, the wider the paws will be. So you just put it over like this. And then you see it has two little paws. It's the weight in here, so it will always drop on the floor like this. And then it will stand upright. So this one is already completely done. As you can see there's a zip tie through the holes like this. So it's really really easy to mount it just like this. You have to put the zip tie in the correct position of course. Doing, fail, haha. <laughs> just like this. And you just Tighten it, you clip off the excess and because of the rubber strands this will not move. So that's ideal. As you can see uh, the paws are a little close together so more rubber strips can be put in. So I have an example of this one which is completely finished which I use all the time. And a little experiment of mine, I'm fishing in a, a, a lake currently that has a really uh, wobbly uh, uh, lake bed. So I've added those little extra paths for more stability. These are just plastic straws, drinking straws. So your camera won't get snagged because they will move and of course those straws have a really ugly color so to say. So I've used some uh, shrinking tube to give it this greenish finish. Alright, one final thing that I wanted to show you guys is how I work through my uh, waterwolf files. Um, some people ask me, do you watch the entire video to see if something's happening? And my general answer is no, I don't. Um, there are two ways to do this. One is to open it in VLC. And just scrub gently through it. See if there's something happening. And here we go. We see a big fish swimming by. We see a big fish swimming by. Now I'm an Apple user and what I usually do is I open it in QuickTime. It takes some time to convert. Well, once converted you can uh, use command T to edit it and then you will see a um, timeline in which you see all the thumbnails. This way we can look much faster for any fish or other activity and we can see this big pike swimming in here. And I can also cut the clip so I save up storage on my, on my computer and at the same time it's um, shareable for social media. Like this. Save it, and we're done. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe, and see you in the next video. Cheers.